Rise and shine, everyone. Hello. Hey, y'all. My name is Tamika Collins, and this is my YouTube page. You can follow me on Facebook at Tamika Collins. You can follow me on TikTok at Coffee, C-O-F-E-P-H, or on Instagram as Coffee Sings, C-O-F-E-P-H, S-I-N-G-S. And thank you so much for rocking with me. It is early in the morning time here, so we're going to get to it, okay? We are reading the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and we're still in Genesis, but it has been some meat, hasn't it? Yes, it has, and I appreciate you following me. Uh, click subscribe, follow, tell your friends, tell everybody, okay? Let's recap, because you know we do that. So let's recap chapter 34 and 35, because now we are on uh, chapter 36. So Dinah, who was Jacob and Leah's daughter, went to visit some of the young women that was in the area that they now stay in. And a local prince named Shechem, whose dad is Hamor, the Hevite, saw her and took her and raped her. Shechem falls in love with her and asks his dad to get her for his wife. Meanwhile, Jacob has heard of this devastation and is upset, but doesn't tell his sons until later once they have came back from the fields. Hamar has tried to speak to Jacob and Shechem to Jacob's sons, and Hamar says, let's make a truce. Your sons marry my daughters and vice versa, and we share our land. Well, the sons are like, nope, you done defiled my sister. And you are not even circumcised. And he is so favored, Shechem, is so favored among his people that he tells them, hey, we are going to do this circumcision and it is done. But three days later, two of Jacob's sons, Simeon and Levi, took swords and went in and killed every male, including Hamar and Shechem. Jacob is furious because this was to be an agreement. And so now his name is like in the dirt and mud, you know, he feels. So um, no matter how hard he has tried. Um, and so Jacob told Jacob is told to move to Bethel and orders everyone to get rid of their idols and the altar has been built, and God has put out a terror over the people in the town that Jacob's people were not harmed. Rebecca gives birth to Benjamin and dies after giving childbirth. Jacob's son's Ru Jacob's son Reuben has had a child by Bela, Beha, which is one of Jacob's concubines. Jacob returns to his dad, Isaac, in Hebron, Hebron where, Je I, uh, ugh, I can't speak this morning, where Adam and Isaac lived as foreigners. Isaac dies at the age of 180 years old, and Esau and Jacob bury him. Now we are in chapter 36, okay? So, let's go. Let's read such as... This is the account of the descendants of Esau, also known as Edom. Oh, we're about to get into some names again. Woo! All right, Esau married two young women from Canaan, Ada and the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, and Ohalibahama, the daughter of Anna and the granddaughter of Zibion, the Hevite. He also married his cousin Basmuth, who was the daughter of Ishmael and the sister of Neboeth. Ada gave birth to a son named Eliphaz for Esau. Basmuth gave son, birth to a son named Raul. Ohalibanma gave birth to son's name. Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. All these sons were born to Esau in the land of Canaan. Esau took his wives, his children, and his entire household, along with his livestock and his cattle, all the wealth that he had acquired in the land of Canaan, and moved away from his brother Jacob. 
there was not enough land to support them both because of all the livestock and possessions they had acquired. That's wealth, y'all. So Esau, also known as Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. This is the account of Esau's descendants, the Edomites, who lived in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliphaz, the son of Esau's wife, Adah, and Ruel, the son of Esau's wife, Basmeth. The descendants of Eliphaz were Teman, Omar, Zepho, Gadam, and Kenes. Timna, the concubine of Esau's son, Eliphaz, gave birth to a son named Amalek. These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Reuel were Nahath, Jerah, Shema, and Misa. These are the descendants of Esau's wife, Basmeth. Esau also had sons through Oholibama, the daughter of Anna and granddaughter of Zibian. Their names were Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These are the descendants of Esau, who became the leaders of various clans. The descendants of Esau's oldest son, Eliphaz, became the leaders of the clans of Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kanaz, Korah, Gadam, and Amalek. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom, who descended from Eliphaz. All these descendants of all of these were descendants of Esau's wife, Ada. The descendants of Esau's son, Raul, became the leaders of the clans of Naeth, Jerah, Shama, and Miza. These are the clan leaders in the land of Edom who descended from Raul. All of these were descendants of Esau's wife, Basman. The descendants of Esau and his wife, Aholibama, became the leaders of the clans of Jeush, Jalam, Korah, and Korah. These are the clan leaders who descended from Esau's wife, Ahalibama, the daughter of Anna. These were the clan's descendants, descended from Esau, also known as Edom, identified by their clan leaders. These are the names of the tribes that descended from Seir, the Horite. They lived in the land of Edom, Lotan. They lived in the land of Edom, Lotan, Shabal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. Dishan and Dishon. Um, these were the Horite clan leaders, the descendants of Seir, who lived in the land of Edom. The descendants of Lotan were Horai and Himam. Lotan's sisters were was named Timna. The descendants of Shabal were Alvin, Manahath, Ebal, Shifo, and Onam. The descendants of Zibion were Aiah and Anna. This is the Anna who discovered the hot springs in the wilderness while he was grazing his father's donkeys. The descendants of Anna were his sons, Dishan, and his daughter, Ohalibama. The descendants of Dishan were Hebdon, Ishbam, Ethron, and Karan. The descendants of Ezer were Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. The descendants of Dishan were Uz and, or Uz and Aran. So these were the leaders of the Harite clans, Lotan, Shabal, Zibion, Anna, Dishon, Ezer, and Dishan. The Harite clans were named after their clan leaders who lived in the land of Seir. These are the kings who ruled the land of Edom before any king ruled over the Israelites. Bela, son of Beor, who ruled in the Edom, who ruled in Edom, from his city of Denhaba. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah, from Bozrah, became king in his place. 
when Joe Bob died, Joe Bob died, Husham from the land of the Timonites became king in his place. When Husham died, Hadad, son of Bedad, became king in his place and ruled from the city of Avith. He was the one who defeated the Midianites in the land of Moab. When Hadad died, Shamla from the city of Mazrika became king in his place. When Shamla died, Shal was from the city of Rehoboth on the river became the king in his place. When Shal died, Balhanan son of Akbar became king in his place. When Balhanan son of Akbar died, Hadad became the king in his place and ruled from the city of Pa. His wife was Mehetabel, the daughter of Metrid and granddaughter of Mazahab. Mazahab. These are the names of the leaders of the clans descended from Esau who lived in the places named for um, Timna, Alva, Jethia, Roholabama, Ohalabama, Eli, Pinon, Kenaz, Timon, Mez, Mezar, Magdiel, and Iram. These are the leaders of the clans of Edom, listed according to their settlements in the land they occupied. They all descended from Esau, the ancestor of the Edomites. <sighs> that was a lot, y'all. And I mean, hey, I'm doing my best. We doing our best to get these names together. We may be saying them right. We might be saying them wrong. But guess what? It's all good. People get my name wrong. <laughs> they call me Tomiko, Tomeka, Tomato. That's what my uncle called me. He called me Tomato. He always called me Tomato. But anyway, it is Tomeka. It is spelled T-O-M-E-K-A, but it's still Tomeka. Okay. But it's all good. All right. But hey, we're not going to get intimidated. We're going to read this thing. And we're going to read it with the fullness thereof because it is what it is, right? So I want y'all to have a beautiful day. We will be back with chapter 37. Um, oh, and we're about to get into the story of Joseph, y'all. One of my favorite stories. I love all the stories, but... I do have some super favorites. I have some super favorite uh people that I love at this Bible also. It's a beautiful word. It's the living word because it lives. You can read this thing every day, same scripture every day, and you will get a different meaning out of it. I mean it's just like his love. It's new every day. It's fresh every day. His grace and his mercy that follows us all the days of our lives is new every day. It's new all day. And it is there for you and me. He came to and died and rose again for you and me. That is his love. You know, that's what he was about was love, period. Who who don't want love? Who don't want it? I want it. You want it? I want it. But anyway, thank you so much for rocking with me. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. It is Labor Day today on this taping. So have a great Labor Day if you're watching me today. Um, and have a great day if you're watching me any other day. All right. I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Peace.